So here's the cable, and the first step is to count five grooves back and cut the jacket. And then to remove that piece, cut parallel to the cable. Then you can peel off that piece and here's the result. Next you can take your MCPT-78 cable prep tool. It has three blades, one, two, and three. The final blade here you remove. It is called the STD slash RC blade. Next, place the cable in the tool so that the groove closest to the jacket fits into the guide. Close the tool and with gentle pressure uh, rotate the tool about 12 times. Too much pressure could bend the metal of the outer shield. It's a bit awkward especially under the camera. It's important to let the blades do the work. So it's best to make sure you replace the blades if they're getting dull. Eventually you'll feel a bit of a snap and you'll see a piece of the uh, cable fall out of the tool. And then a few more turns just to make sure that the small blade cuts the jacket properly. And there you get a nice square cut on the front and a nice square cut after you remove the final piece of the jacket. The next step is to take the small pack of lubrication that came with the connector and apply it to the jacket. This is to help the o-ring that's inside the connector body slide onto the jacket. I removed the o-ring for demonstration purposes. That's where it usually sits. Now is the time to apply the connector body onto the cable. And then apply the spring ring onto the first groove of the cable. Even with a lot of force, that spring ring will hold the connector body onto the cable. And once again for demonstration purposes, I have cut a piece of cable to show you the next step underneath the camera. The next step is to compress the dielectric and flare the outer conductor. Using a utility knife, try to get in the tight space between the dielectric and the outer conductor. The utility knife is part of a two-step process. Right now I am creating space between the two materials. And I will do this for the entire 360 degrees of the cable. Remember that this procedure in a real situation will be performed with the connector body and the spring ring on the cable.
And here's what it looks like after the utility knife is used. A little bit of a gap between the outer conductor and the dielectric. The next step is to flare the outer conductor and compress the dielectric even more. And I'm actually using a woodworking tool to do this. It is a U-gouge. Uh, you could get U-gouges of various widths and curves. I got a curve to match the uh, curve of the outer conductor. Here is the finished product after flaring the outer conductor. After that is complete, it is time to connect the connector head to the clamping nut. First tightening with your fingers and then using two wrenches Remember, when using the wrenches, uh, hold the connector head steady while you turn the clamping nut. Here's the finished product. And if you were to remove the connector head to check your work, you should see a nice uniform flare which was created by the connector head. This proves that you have an excellent connection and it is the result of the extra step taken by flaring the outer conductor with the woodworking tool. That extra step is not in the manufacturer's assembly instructions. So if you use those instructions, you may find you will not get as nice a product.